Welcome to Marseille and to Yossi Monthly's test of the Dela 38. Start as ever at the bow. Got a single bow roller here, offset to starboard, and you'll notice just on the, the tip of it there is a Jenica tack. You can, you know, tack the Jenica and away you go. Um, quite low furler, you'll notice, which allows you know more sail area for the jib. But this being an open pulpit, you have got sort of six to eight inches of jib. You know, if you're uh, if you crack the sheets, then the sail will be outside these, and if you come hard on the wind, you'll have to come up here and hoik them back in again. Minor inconvenience, but uh, needs doing. So we've got these pop-up cleats down here, which look very nice and you know smooth, totally out of the way when you're sailing. But they're just a bit, a bit hard at the edge. If you're trying to about to walk to get yourself closer alongside, it might be there's a bit too much friction there, I think. But they do look great, and they, you know they work fine. Anchor locker here. It's not bad. Decent space. Got room for a couple of fenders there, a recessed furler, and the chain locker forward. Really great non-slip here. It's kind of stippled, almost like a paint effect, and it's brilliant. There's none here, but I'm surprised that, you know, there's a fair amount of grip there anyway. Tow rail here, I think, is a bit shallow, about an inch, maybe. Um, but I do like these. They've got laminated whole deck joints, and the stanchions are actually built into that joint. Very tidy. Uh, moving back here, nice flush hatch there. You've got these chain plates outboard on the top side, so there's a little bit of a swing round. Nothing too dramatic. And you've got a little pad eye there for a barber hauling off the wind. So you've got these Harkin jib tracks here, which run very nicely, and you've got a tweaker there, so you can adjust them from the cockpit. It doesn't look quite as long as it should be. If you had uh, quite a lot of the jib furled, I think you'd struggle to get the angle right on the sheeting. Anyway, so the handrails come from the mast as far back as here, and I'm thinking You'd have the most enormous spray hood here. It'd be more like a spray hanger. We'd have to come from here, right the way back over the coach roof to about here, and that's that's huge. That's going to look really strange. And I don't see any other way you can do it. You can't, you know, have it here. It's going to look odd. So you've got your halyard winches here, twin Harken 40s. This one's electric. Uh, two banks of clutches here, the lines are all ducted off, which is very tidy, looks good. Great cockpit table here, which has got fabulous grab rails, excellent again for bracing. But we're just not sure about this, you're going to crack, just crash a thigh into that, and that's, that's probably going to hurt. Um, got some co cockpit stowage here, it's sole depth, this is the twin half cabin version. There is a version where that's just a quarter locker, that's a huge locker over there. This one isn't, it's the tw uh, twin half cabin version, so these are sole depth lockers. Recessed traveller, very tidy, along there. And that's the German main sheet system which goes forward and comes back to these winches here. It's very effective, very efficient. Uh, gorgeous wheels, feels great, Jeff for steering, always a good sign. And you can reach the main sheet winch here. And also, if you're, uh, if you're heading upwind, you could clutch off the lured main sheet, bring the jib sheet back, because they're both 46s, do the jib sheet from here and the main sheet from over there. Very tidy. Got the engine controls here, gas locker over there, manual bilge pump and shower. And this is, uh, there's the 24 to 1 backstay, adjustable as well. And this greatest of ideas, the folding bathing platform. So down here, you see this foot block? I probably prefer it a little bit further inboard because I found I was almost toppling over it when we were sailing along, quite, quite deep hill. But uh, I'd prefer that a little bit inboard, just for me. Uh, small deck stowage here. 
You notice that uh, liner tray there, so that's fully watertight, and there's no rubber seal around here because it's not required. On this side, you notice there is a rubber seal and there's no tray, and that through there is uh, the aft cabin. So if you did get any water in here, then you could expect a wet bunk that night, at the very least. So these have been around for a while, but we always love them. A cascade washboard means you don't have to store it anywhere, and it stows very tidily. Great grab rails up here, and also here, so coming below is really safe. And we like this as well for keeping sail ties and uh, winch handles in. Very handy. We like this too, it's a light switch that's always on, whether the batteries are switched on or not, so you can just come on the boat, just back that on, you can see everything. Here's the galley, great splashback, really good fiddles around here, except these small gaps here, which will kind of drain slightly inconveniently. Mixer tap and twin sinks under here. Uh, top access to the fridge and also access from here. So it's a huge fridge. Um, got the light controls there. There's your bin locker. And these are rather nice. We do like these curved gas strut lockers. Uh, it's good space in them. I might like to see a pegboard, perhaps. And maybe some use made of this space out of here. Maybe dividers, just so that things don't crash around there. Another locker there. Cut redraw here with plastic tray, all ready to go. Down here there's a pot locker with um, these dividers in there. The light pegs, but they're sort of contoured to hold pots better. So this is the twin half cabin version, and this is the, the cabin that's always here. It's the other one that's optional. Uh, so six foot three inch headroom, six foot seven inch berth. Got opening hatch into the coach roof and the cockpit there and the hold port there, although probably like a blind on that one. Big hanging locker and shelf locker in here. Nice shelf running the length of it. There's an um, access panel there into a, a kind of maintenance channel in the middle. There's the hatch at the foot of the berth, which goes into the transom. And there's engine access here. Under here, you've got the 160 litre fuel tank, and there's a heater duct down here. So here's the port aft cabin. This is the optional one. So this you know, can be deck stows if you want. And head starts here. It's exactly the same as the starboard aft cabin, except that this is slightly smaller because we've got the heads there. So this is the um, the first part of the heads. So you've got somewhere to keep your towels here, you've got the nice mirrored lockers here, all of which have stowage behind, and there's huge stowage behind here, and also seacock access. The only thing I'm not really sure about is the depth of the sink. I like the, the plug. I just don't think the sink's terribly deep. I can see that spilling out. The most impressive thing about this is the door. The reason this door's clever is it serves two functions. So it separates this area, the heads area, from the saloon. Um, but it also separates the heads from this area. So a standard door latch wasn't going to work because it has to work two ways, this door. So very clever latches. Obviously, you see nothing there. Nothing pops out. But this is magnetic and it draws out the bolt, so push it to. That's it closed. And that happens on both doors. Very clever. Uh, here's the shower, separate shower unit there. And the heads is below here, with a little seat to sit on. These are going to need blinds, unless you're really into exhibitionism. Uh, there's nowhere to keep loo rolls, so you have to remember to grab a roll when you go in. So coming out into the saloon, fabulous area, love this lighting. So they've got the Hansa controls, you can automatically dim the lights, brighten them again. They're also quite tiddly in that they tilt, so you can kind of adjust your lighting a little bit. Uh, we also like the down lighters here and the up lighters here, which really add a lot to the mood of the place. Got some great, great grab rails there as well. Light during the day is very good, and ventilation too, so you've got three opening hatches here as well as the two in the galley. So light and ventilation are great. The hole ports, there are two, but they're a bit small and they're a bit high for me. I'm not sure that's quite working for me. 
Uh, it's very good in terms of stowage. So you've got these, under these anti-macassars here, you've got these gas strutted soft close lockers. You've got the domestic battery bank under here with switches there. There are drawers under there, 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 and here. And a very nice bottle locker in the table. And of course, some storage there. More storage under there, and this is quite a special area. Um, looks like a very weird table. It is, in fact, a very weird chart table. So we pull these out. Slide this across. The seat sits in here. That goes there. Et voila. One chart table. Uh, so it's an odd shape. I don't know why it's this shape. I can understand that end being bevel, but this end is against this bulkhead here. Shouldn't it be? Shouldn't it be flat? Anyway, apparently not. So there's some storage under there. Obviously, it's a four and a half chart table. Um, we do like this red and white light. Got the B and G Zeus out here. Fixed VHF, nice stereo, and switch panel. And yes, when you're done navigating, it turns into a rather nice, rather civil space. So here's the full cabin. Probably the get a bunch, I guess. Uh, about six foot, six foot one under the under the main hatch here. You've also got two thin port lights again with no blinds, so you might need to remedy that. Uh, got shelf lockers this side, twin shelf lockers. These little cubbies again, both sides, and hanging locker there. There's the berth. Uh, you've got the water tank under there. Unfortunately, the water pump is just under here, right under your head. So if it kicks off first thing in the morning with a kettle, you'll know all about it. Got so shelving here. There's some storage forward of the water tank. Uh, in general, storage is excellent. Light's good through these three panels, and at night, it's got these same gorgeous downlighters that we've seen in the saloon. So it was kind of a, an interesting day. We left Marseille, and it was quite light to start with, maybe sort of eight knots true. And then by the time we got out, we went round uh, the Ile, Ile Diff and Ile Friul, did the full circuit of them. Uh, towards the outside, out of the lee of Marseille, we were getting sort of 12 to 14 knots. So we, we went... Uh, a broad reach to start with, with the Jenica up, and we were getting sort of 6.8 to 8.55 knots. It's a very lively boat. Uh, then we come up onto a beam reach and getting 7.8 to 9. She is awfully slippy. And then we came up, dropped the Jenica, came onto a fetch and got 6.8 to 7.8, and then upwind at about sort of 27 to 30 degrees of apparent wind. It was guesswork because there aren't any instruments, wind instruments on the boat. We were getting 6.5 to 7.2 knots upwind and tacking through 90. She's a cracking performer. She feels not quite as lively as I'd imagined. I, was, I wasn't expecting magic. And it's certainly very good. If Jeff is steering again, always good. And the rudder blade is, they've gone as far forward with it as they dare. So that it, the water flow doesn't detach from it. So it won't round up. It never loses bite. It did once or twice, the water flow separated from the rudder. You could hear it, it was like a knock, like an alarm. And you just straighten up for a minute and then you get your grip again. So we didn't round up once. So yeah, cracking performer. This isn't the performance version. Uh, so it's the performance version has a taller rig and a deeper keel. But this still has the T keels. So the ballast is really good. There were two of us on it most of the day. And uh, we were fine, you know, we weren't healing over. I suppose on the upwind section, we were getting about 20 knots apparent. We probably should have reefed. Anyway, so lovely boat to sail, really good fun. Um, and it's wonderful down below. You've got this gorgeous, gorgeous light, which um, you tend not to see in other words. It's lovely design. We're loving this. This is from Dela, consulted a local architect. They've always done their own thing uh, before. But now they've been bought by Hansa. And this is the first boat, the 38, is the first boat to be designed and built in Greifswald, um, Hansa's yard, uh, since the closure of the Dela yard. And they consulted a local architect who came up with these ideas, and it really, really works well. So you've got the dark out there to give the, the idea of depth. You've got these fabulous curves, the downlighting and uplighting. It's a really stylish place to be. 
and of course wonderful performance up there so I'm imagining this is going to appeal to uh, I guess people who go family cruising and perhaps like entertaining in a, a space like this um, and then perhaps go out on a Wednesday night and rag it around the cans I can see it appealing to those those kinds of people um, and it won't set them back much the base boat is 129,000 euros X tax so once you've added on sort of 15 grand's worth of stuff uh, paid your taxes is about 150,000 pounds sterling for a 38 foot boat that sails wonderfully and you know is a joy to be in. Mm -hmm.